What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another Pitching Ninja's Filthiest Pitches of the Day. Remember, before we get to those pitches, hit that subscribe button. Join Ninja Nation. And now, without further ado, here are my filthiest pitches of the day. I'm going to start with Lucas Giolito, who had 8 Ks in 7 innings, giving up only one run. He relied on his fastballs, his nasty change-ups, and wicked sliders. I also loved his K struts and little K kicks, too. You could tell that Giolito was pitching with confidence. He faced Braxton Garrett, who was outstanding with nine strikeouts in five of the third scoreless innings. He had these sinkers and sliders, including this filthy back foot slider, as well as his cutters. Garrett has quietly turned himself into a strikeout machine. Keep that in mind for any future K props. Griffin Canning had seven Ks in five innings, giving up three earned runs, and had this fastball and painted changeup and got a sword on this slider. Kyle Gibson had four Ks in six and a third innings, giving up three runs, and had this backdoor cutter and got a sword on this sweeper. Hunter Green had nine Ks in five and a third innings, giving up three earned runs. He relied on his usual blazing fastballs as well as these six sliders. He faced Adam Wainwright, who had two Ks in five and a third innings, giving up three runs and had this 84 mile an hour of paint and backdoor two-seamer. Kevin Gosman had four Ks in four and two-thirds innings. He gave up six earned runs, which is kind of uncharacteristic of Gosman, who is no doubt one of the best pitchers in the AL. But he did have this very characteristic nasty splitter. He faced Louis Varland, who had six Ks in four and two-thirds innings, giving up four runs. He relied on his fastballs and cutters. Ty Walker had five Ks in five scoreless innings, giving up only two hits, thanks to these wicked splitters and cutters. Ryan Bayo had three Ks in seven innings, giving up two runs on three hits. And here are a couple of home plate views of his changeup and two-seamer. He battled Clark Schmidt, who had four Ks in five and a third innings, giving up only one run, and had this slider and two-seamer. Hayden Wesneski had four Ks in three innings, giving up five runs. And I like this overlay of his changeup and sweeper, and you can see how they crisscross on the way to the plate. It shows the kind of filthy movement Wesneski gets even though his results this game were meh. Trevor Williams had these filthy sliders on his way to six strikeouts in five innings, giving up only two runs. He faced Bryce Elder, who only had one strikeout in five and a third innings, and gave up five runs. He did have this slider, but I start to wonder whether the league is caught up to him. Zach Gallen had five Ks in five and two-thirds innings, but gave up ten hits and five runs. I did this fastball and curveball overlay, which shows why that combo is usually pretty deadly but I kind of blame myself for jinxing Gallon because I featured him on my Peacock segment on the pregame show. I like to call him Grandmaster Gallon because he really treats pitching almost like a game of chess between the pitcher and the hitter. Shane McClanahan had five Ks in seven innings, giving up three runs, and had these wicked change-ups and sliders. McClanahan did pick up his 10th win of the season, the first pitcher to get there. J.P. Sears had five Ks in five innings, giving up two runs, thanks to his fastballs and painted changeup, and he faced Freddie Peralta, who had five Ks in five innings but gave up four runs, and had this fastball and slider for a sword. Shane Bieber had nine Ks in seven scoreless innings, giving up only three hits. He had this paintish fastball, these sliders, and of course, his hammer knuckle curves. He faced Brandon Belak, who had four Ks in five innings, giving up five runs, had this curveball, and got a sword, as well as this nasty slider. And here's an overlay of his fastball and curveball, and you can see how those pitches work together. Mitch Keller had seven Ks in seven innings, giving up only one run and two hits. And look back to being filthy Mitch Keller, with these fastballs and two-seamers, including this painted two-seamer, as well as these cutters. The filthiest pitch of the day and one of the filthiest pitches of the year so far was this sweeper from Mitch Keller. This thing broke 24 inches. Yes, two freaking feet. I put a tail on this alien pitch just so you can see the movement. And holy crap, that is a lot of movement. I also overlaid it with his fastball. And look at how far out that sweeper starts and then ends up way inside that fastball. I think they call it a sweeper because you couldn't hit this thing with a broom. An absolutely ridiculous pitch from Keller. 
Denelson Lamette had five Ks in five innings, giving up two earned runs, and had this fastball and slider combo. And he battled my filthiest pitcher of the day yesterday, Blake Snell. Snellzilla had 12 Ks in seven innings, giving up three hits and only one run. He, of course, had his fastballs and changeups, but this was all about his curveball. He had 11 swings on his curveball, and nine of them were whiffs. That's an 82% whiff rate for the game. And for the season, the whiff rate is 50.8% on his curveball. No doubt, one of the better curveballs for starting pitchers in baseball. A very impressive performance by Snell. Now on to my filthiest relievers. Matt Brash had these nasty sliders. Brooks Raley put Bay in a sweeper hold with these sweepers. Jordan Hicks had this 102-mile-an-hour two-seamer that ran 16 inches, as well as these sliders. That's some filth. Craig Kimbrell had these heaters. Trevor Steffen had this fastball and splitter. Jose LeClerc had this slombio. You can see how he uses his three fingers to make this thing break. Jose Alvarado had these disgusting cutters, including this one that was kind of invisible. They really have to fix these green screen ads. Jordan Romano had this 98-mile-an-hour gas. Brandon Crawford pitched in relief and was actually pretty filthy. He was up to 90 miles an hour on his heater. And he pulled a little Zach Grinke with his changeup being faster than his fastball. Okay, I doubt it was really a changeup. He had these curveballs and changed arm angles on his curveball and had some filthy arm side run on some of these. Good stuff from Crawford. He finished with a zero ERA, which is the lowest in Major League history. Chris Martin got the save thanks to this cutter. And I overlaid this cutter with his two-seamer so you can see why you would swing at the cutter. It tunnels with that two-seamer really well. The two-seamer ends up on the plate, and that cutter, well, it's off the plate, getting the whiff. And my filthiest reliever of the day yesterday was Nate Pearson for this White Castle special and this overpowering 101 mile an hour heater. And now, my pitching ninja moment of zen. It's Shohei Otani with a filthy breaking nose. I'll get you a grip on this later. Not only is he a unicorn, but he could be a member of the Three Stooges. Doing a little Mo, Curly, and Larry with Luis Renifo there. <laughs> I love that. Mo, Larry, the cheese on that. <laughs> what is up, everybody? My picks of the day today are a three-leg parlay. I'm going to start out with the same game parlay of Bryce Miller for 5Ks or more and Jesus Lazardo for 7Ks or more and top it off with James Paxton for 8Ks or more. What would your picks of the day be? 